Hello, my friends, and welcome to a very special video today, especially if you do like to spend your money wisely. Today's video is going to be a worth the splurge based on a kind of recent haul, a couple of kind of recent hauls that I've done on newer skincare releases that uh, cost a little more money. This video is serving as a little bit of a catch-all catch-up video. Mm, that sounded like the sauce. Anyway, we're going back to what products I bought in the Alta 10x points multiplier, products I bought in the Sephora friends and family sale, and I'm bringing in a few PR products at the end of this video. And speaking of Sephora, I absolutely love how excited Sephora was for this bag. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Some of you are probably going, what? <laughs> Sephora did this Rouge event where if you went in store and shopped with them as a Rouge member, meaning you spent over $1,000 in the store, you got this bag where, I don't know if you can see it, but in really tiny lettering, it says, I spent $1,000 at Sephora and all I got was this bag. Ah, uh, the great debate. Who do you get more with through their loyalty program, Sephora or Ulta? <laughs> Let's get into this video. I do want to kind of go in the order of a skincare routine. And again, I'm going back a couple of months here. I don't know if I said that yet. This is a couple months of usage of these products. So let's start off with the Tower 28 Daily Balancing Gel Cleanser. I really like Tower 28. I think they are a cute brand that prices themselves at a good price point. Yes, they're mid-range, but they're still more on the affordable side with this cleanser coming in at $20. Realistically, it, the line gets very blurry between this price range and drugstore, you know, $19.99 versus $20. <laughs> this is a really nice cleanser. As somebody who likes a very gentle cleanser, I can tell you this is very gentle. I'm really impressed with how they made it uh, really feel like you're cleansing with aloe and yet it does bubble up just a little bit. It's just enough bubbles to give you that sensation that I think a lot of people really need. You know, I've talked before about how you can cleanse your skin with a cream cleanser that doesn't foam at all, but a lot of people mentally struggle with it because they're so used to seeing bubbles when they cleanse. So you get a little bit of that in this product. They are boasting that it has some zinc, some magnesium, some copper, panthenol, aloe. Here's the deal with cleansers and something I will just forever point out. So when you use a cleanser, while it's on your skin, of course you're getting the benefits from those ingredients. But what do you do with cleanser? Does it does it just sit on your skin? <laughs> no, you you wash it off. It goes down the drain. So while those ingredients contribute to the experience of using the product, they don't contribute as much as much to long-term results on your skin. So I've always felt that this is a category where if you don't want to spend extra money, go with the drugstore options 100%. I don't think you will be missing out as they say. I mean, if you saw my empties, you just saw I finished a bubble cleanser. I have expensive cleansers in my collection and yet I love my drugstore cleansers. I'm happy that I got it because I am always looking for, especially at Sephora, cleansers that I can recommend that make sense in my head as far as being gentle enough and not being overpriced. So I like it, absolutely worth the splurge at Sephora, but don't feel like you have to go to Sephora for a cleanser. I guess that's the best summary I can give. You can go to CVS or Walgreens and get a wonderful cleanser. Let's talk about a couple of serums next. These have been a great complement to each other. I've been using the Drunk Elephant C. Luma Hydra Bright Serum during the day and the In Beauty Elastic Skin at night. Okay, so first of all, I know, I, I to this day, I know that some of you will never buy from Drunk Elephant and that is A-OK. -okay. I don't know what it is with me and Drunk Elephant. We go way back, we go back before the kiddos found the brand and started making smoothies in every freestanding Sephora that's ever existed. Ugh. I may never know why this brand works so well for me, but they do, and when I recently re-reviewed the brand, I said I was probably gonna cave and buy the new C. Luma Hydra Bright Serum. Sure enough, I did. Talk about a serum that just sounds like it's made for me. <laughs> 
9% sodium ascorbyl phosphate, which if you are not new to this channel, then you have heard me say a million times, that is my favorite vitamin C derivative because it is the form of vitamin C that may be helpful not only for antioxidant properties and gentle brightening, but also to help reduce acne. And 9%, to, to even see a disclosed level of that ingredient is impressive in itself. So many of these brands just include it in a product and we are left guessing how much is in there. I mean, recently someone asked me about the new Axis Y products that have this ingredient and uh, I, I don't think they have anywhere near enough to uh, come close to the results that we've seen in the research. But this does, this is actually over the research level of sodium ascorbyl phosphate but it's such a good serum. I will once again say Bubble also has a sodium ascorbyl phosphate based serum, which used to be my absolute favorite vitamin C product. I don't know what happened. I've talked to a lot of you about this, but for some reason, it, a day came where that serum started to bother my skin and a lot of you said you had the same experience. So for now I have this one. I know the price point is high. I don't know. I don't know if $68 is worth it because I'm a deal shopper. Of course I'm going to look for another sale on this. <laughs> that goes without saying, you know, getting this for 10x points, I'm in. What I don't understand is why I don't see more products with this sodium ascorbyl phosphate ingredient. I, I'm not the only one that loves it. And yet a lot of our other options would be products like Mad Hippies, which is fine for a lot of people, but does contain some citrus ingredients. And you know, again, that's something I really like about Drunk Elephant. They have always been a fragrance and essential oil free brand. Not a perfect brand, mind you, but that's something they've gotten right. So yeah, I guess I'll just have to see. I hope this lasts me a while because again, I am very happy with it. <sighs> Part of me wishes I hadn't tried it. You all know, you, you know, you know that situation. Then we have In Beauty's Elastic Skin. Now this is supposed to be In Beauty's dupe of the Cosrx Snail Essence with vegan growth factors and a phytomucin. And again, you know, when products go viral like the Cosrx Snail Essence did, you have not only K-beauty brands making dupes, right? A lot of us have now tried the, uh, uh, V Green version, as well as many more. East and Tree came out with dupes. There, there's so many vegan dupes at this point. But with how viral that product went, of course, Western brands also want to get on that sweet, sweet virality train. And I do like this approach from In Beauty. They are including a lot of peptides as well as copper peptide. One thing that I've noticed with K-Beauty products that contain copper peptides, and I don't know if this is just me, let me know how you all feel about this in the comments below, but I feel like I see copper peptides in a lot of K-Beauty products, and yet I feel, I, I have this sneaking suspicion that the products contain a very, very, very small amount of copper peptide. I'm, it's not even a guess. Some of these brands do disclose, you know, 100 parts per million of copper peptide, which is, is very, it's very low. <laughs> we still don't really know an effective use level of copper peptide, but what I can tell you is I personally loved Peach and Lily's copper peptide serum. Wow, they did such a good job on that, and it's only 0.2% copper peptide, but also a lot of other peptides. So I think that in these past couple of months of testing the In Beauty Elastic Serum, that's been what I've been comparing this to in my head. This is a Peach and Lily versus In Beauty situation here. And I'm gonna say, while I do like that texture that In Beauty came up with for this serum to mimic the Cosrx Snail or other snail products, ultimately I do feel like I saw a lot more in my skin from the Peach and Lily. So I liked this overall. I like In Beauty Project overall. I think they're a cute brand, and I like that, you know, we have these brands at Sephora now, like Tower 28, like In Beauty, where the price point is reasonable. But if you made me pick here, oh, we're going to either Alta or Sephora for a peptide serum, where do you want to go? It it would be Alta for the Peach and Lily. I'll link you my video if you want to see more about copper peptides as well as that serum. Then, a while ago, I talked about a product that I did receive in PR from Laneige. So we're actually talking about K-Beauty that is sold in the US. 
Laneige sent me this bouncy and firm sleeping mask and I absolutely loved it. I still love it. It's such a nice sleeping mask and wildly enough, Peony actually does have research supporting its use for anti-aging products. So I knew I wanted to try the eye cream. Is it an eye cream or is it an eye sleeping mask? Bouncy and Firm Eye Sleeping Mask. And when I was in Sephora, I saw this set for $2 more than the cost of the eye cream, with even the eye cream in the box inside. You get this adorable squishy bag. It's so cute. Why is it so cute? It shouldn't be this cute. Totally bought it for the bag, but also it had a mini size of the sleeping mask as well as the lip sleeping mask. So this is what I bought. <laughs> I gotta be honest though, I do feel that the eye sleeping mask doesn't measure up to the face sleeping mask. It's one of those situations. The texture is completely different and it's something you can very clearly see. Here's the uh, sleeping mask, here's the eye sleeping mask, which just kind of looks like Frankly, it looks exactly like the Abib overnight mask, except it's called the eye mask. So I'm gonna say this one wasn't worth it for me. I'm still keeping this one. I don't really make a lot of returns, but I wouldn't buy this one again, and yet I would buy the face sleeping mask again. It's so funny. Just because you like one product from a, a line doesn't mean you're gonna like the whole line. Yeah, I really felt like every time I went to bed with the sleeping mask all over my face, my skin looked smooth and glowing and clear. And with the eye mask, it just felt like it didn't make any kind of additional difference past the eye creams that I already use. Okay, so you know how I've said I, I was in store shopping at Sephora for these products? Something got me while I was there. This is not a skincare product. It is a body mist. They got me so good. I want to talk about this because I have had people ask me about Fleur, and so far my response has been honestly confusion. <laughs> Fleur's missing person went viral, right? Have you all smelled that? I don't get it at all with that. To me, you know, I, I know, I know that scent and fragrance is extremely personal, but every time I've heard someone say they like missing person, I can't help but go, did you smell it? Did we, did we smell the same fragrance? Because to me, it smells a little moldy. <laughs> And listen, I've been trying. I bought this one, the uh, Floria, which they said is a white floral for people that don't like white florals. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's a white floral for people who like white florals. If you don't like white florals, don't buy white florals. <laughs> it really is okay to not like everything. It, it's, it's fine. <laughs> And then, you know, Tangerine Boy, it was very popular. I got this one, it smells like oranges. It smells like oranges, but as somebody who likes citrus fragrances, I feel like I always regret when I choose to wear one because they just don't stay with me in the way that gourmands are really having a moment and gourmands tend to stay with me. So I can enjoy them all day, right? I think that's part of what played into me, even wandering over to the Fleur body sprays. I started spraying them and for the most part, I wasn't really overwhelmed. I thought they smelled nice. And then I got to Caramel Skin and I sprayed this one on a test strip and I, I, I had to have it. <laughs> so it turns out that I don't even really like Fleur's fragrances, but uh, I love, love this body mist. Not only does it smell absolutely delicious, but how, how, tell me how it is that a body mist has so much longevity. When I wear this, it stays with me for hours and hours, for hours and hours of people going, oh, you smell so good. This video is about skincare and for the most part, fragrance-free skincare. I like to have some good smells in my life, but not on my face. And so I've just got to say for me, this might've actually been one of the most worth the splurge items in this whole video. <laughs> good job, Fleur. You converted me. I like not only that mist, but Vanilla Skin also smelled really good to me. Their Gourmand Body Mist. Amazing. I want to include one more product today. I think this is my most expensive splurge in the video. It, 
Yeah, I'm going to say it is. I'm going to say it's my most expensive. The Bloom Effects Tulip Dew Sunscreen Serum. Let me be honest with you all that there is a real mental block for me every time I start trying to review these kind of luxury sunscreens. And let me just put all my cards on the table. There's a reason for this. It is very simply that I think that sunscreen should be something that anybody who wants sunscreen should have access to it. It's one of those things where preventing worse things down the road, far worse things than aging, is so much more monetarily worth it for a society. <laughs> I'm right, even if you don't care about people at all, even if you strictly see this in a monetary sense, it is better to put sunscreen in the hands of people now than deal with the costs later. And that's why sunscreen inaccessibility should be as over as Diddy. So I think that it's it's a it's a mental obstacle for me because I know that there are these expensive sunscreens out there, and I even like some of them. So I think what I kind of have to get over in order to objectively review this is, uh, you know. Uh, the same thing as a luxury handbag, right? I don't judge people for choosing a luxury handbag. If that makes you happy, great. You can also carry your items in a $10 handbag. And both bags will carry your items from point A to point B. So it is through that sense that I would like to try to review luxury sunscreens. Nobody needs to spend this much. There are beautiful, beautiful sunscreens available for, what, $10? Beauty of Joe Sun's new sunscreen is incredible. <laughs> this one is $68 for 1.86 fluid ounces, and I also love it as a luxury sunscreen. So let me tell you why. I've tried a lot of these tinted sunscreens, and I feel like the tint is almost always kind of off. <laughs> This has to be the first time that I've ever tried a tinted sunscreen where I really feel that my skin immediately looks better upon putting this on my skin. It's a funny story of how I came to realize how much I like this. So I went to a theme park and we have one of those family members that just always has her phone out. Her name might start with an M and end with um, always recording us. And I, I looked at the videos that she had taken later and I was going, what on earth am I wearing? What looks so good? I did not wear foundation at all that day. I just threw some of this on and it looks really good on when you apply the two full finger amount of this product. Yeah, it, it actually is a gorgeous sunscreen. If you're not familiar with this brand, they are from uh, the, the Netherlands? Wait, am I right? I just started doubting myself and yet I've been interested in this brand for such a long time because I think they are a cute sounding brand. So I do really like this. Is it worth a splurge? That's relative. Not everybody wants to have some kind of foundation-like effect in their sunscreen, but I will tell you if you want that, it's pretty hard to accomplish. This is the best I've ever seen it done. Let's end this video with some products that I did receive in PR. I am still going to judge these exactly the same as if I had bought these with my own money. So why don't we just start with one where I do not think it's worth the splurge. Tatcha has expanded their Kiss You line. This is called the Kiss You Lip Treatment. The packaging is supposed to be a luxurious experience on its own. It kind of locks closed. I don't know why I said kind of. It's it locks closed. It's got this kind of pillowy cushion to it. It's not as soft as you might think though. Unfortunately, I just don't think this is worth $40. Not in this era of lip balms. There's nothing objectively wrong with this, but it's not a problem solver on its own. See, what Tatcha came up with is this, this whole system, a whole ritual. It's a big part of their thing and I respect it, but it can get very expensive to follow their rituals. And with this one, they want you to start with a lip scrub, move on to this product, your lip treatment, it's essentially a lip serum, and then follow with their lip moisturizer. In an era where there are all kinds of lip balms that are acting as both a treatment for your lips and also contain moisturizing ingredients, a two for one there, I just don't see a reason to spend this much more on this kind of product where on its own, again, it doesn't do enough 
A serum is your treatment step in your skincare routine, right? You always follow with the moisturizer to lock everything in. And that's, that's my problem with this. It's not a complete product. You have to follow with moisturizer. And especially on your lips, which do not produce oil themselves, you, you really, really want to follow with a lip balm of some sort. Contrast that to something like the Lawless Forget the Filler Overnight Lip Plumping Mask. This is an all-in-one. You just put this on, you go to bed, and it hydrates and moisturizes your lips all night long. This is the new Sweet Daisy. They added some shimmer to this, which is interesting. You don't usually see that in an overnight mask, but it's a fun touch. And it's sweet, so if you didn't like the other flavors that they have, this one does actually not have that minty flavor to it. It's sweet instead. Let's talk about Remedy next. So you all have probably heard about this company. This is Dr. Shaw's skincare brand. Dr. Shaw of Doctorly. I'm sure all of you here on YouTube are familiar with that channel. So he came out with this brand, Remedy, and I absolutely love the informative website that he has. If you're at all interested in these products, you can go on the website and you can understand exactly what ingredients these products contain and why. I'm holding up the remedy for pore size here. It says powered by retinol, salicylic acid, niacinamide, green tea, and perlite. And the website tells you why. Why were those ingredients added to help with pore size? What is the research? It's all right there at your fingertips. It's brilliant. The prices are not bad at all. Oh my goodness, for a dermatologist owned brand. I mean, this is incredible to see. The one problem that I stumbled upon when I got these in is I realized, oh, I already use a retinoid. So I immediately tried to recruit my sweetie who has gotten into skincare more recently. And I said, listen, I think you're gonna love this brand. It's dermatologist developed. The products are wonderful. And, and she looked at these and said, remedy for pore size, that one. But I also forgot that she already uses retinol, just retinol. And uh, lo and behold, about one week after incorporating this into her routine, she comes to me and she says, why is my face peeling? <laughs> In this moment, I looked at her skin and her skin was so glowy, just incredible looking, but also, yes, the classic peelies from overusing a retinoid. You know what happens, right? Retinoids, including retinol, can help to increase skin turnover so you have that natural glow to your skin, but also your skin can be kind of flaking off. It's so interesting to see because we typically associate that with tretinoin, maybe adapalene, but uh, she only uses retinol. Granted, this does have salicylic acid as well, so you know the more of these actives you add into your routine, the more likely you are to see these signs of overdoing things. So I like these products, but I do ultimately feel a little confused because I, I feel like if you've watched Dr. Lee, you've seen them talk about the benefits of retinoids, and yet they put retinol... <sighs> it's one of these things where it does make sense. It's such a good ingredient, of course you should add it into your products, but by adding it into your products, it can be too much for people that are already using retinol products. <laughs> Nonetheless, good all-in-ones, especially if you are new to skincare. Oh my goodness. I, I mean, these can be so worth it. So this whole video I've had, I want to dance with somebody stuck in my head, and I've been trying to figure out where it came from. My lipstick is named Whitney. <laughs> oh, the human brain. It is, it is so funny. And I have but one product to end this video on. This is the Lion Pose Pep Talk Biopeptide Barrier Cream. I feel like I've talked so much about moisturizer on this channel. You know, it's one of those categories where you need a moisturizer. You need a moisturizer, moisturizer, cleanser, sunscreen. Those are the must-haves in a skincare routine. But there are so many moisturizers on the market. So many, so many that are good. Ironically, because there are so many good moisturizers, it can make it hard to find the best moisturizer. And, and even when I got this in, I was excited about it. Bioplacenta peptides, they are claiming that this is a vegan product made to mimic human placenta. Ceramides, glutathione, ashwagandha, the point is that this is supposed to be a, a product that really helps to restore your skin barrier. And a lot of products claim to do that. I have so many repair products that I, I honestly just kind of forgot about it for a few 
days. And when I finally tried it, I absolutely loved it. Oh, this is a gorgeous moisturizer. <laughs> it does have this pump packaging, which personally I'm not the world's biggest fan of, but I know a lot of people like it. I do like that it is at least smaller in that design. This is more like the, uh, the goat milk brand, what the, uh, Beekman, Beekman 1802 in terms of sizing versus Drunk Elephant. I do think the way they're marketing this is interesting though. They're saying that this is for uh, retinol and AHA users to help your skin to bounce back. That is a smart and unique approach. I mean, we were, ju we were just talking about this. I think it is really smart to say, hey, here's a product that can help if you have overdone those or even to prevent you from overdoing that. And this works well day or night too. This is actually a repair cream that you can use under makeup or you can use in your PM skincare routine. It is really well done. Again, there's a lot of good moisturizers out there, but if you struggle a lot with your barrier, this could be a good one to try. And my friends, that brings us to the end of today's video. As always, let me know your thoughts. In fact, let me know your thoughts, please, on a video like this that is about much more expensive products. Have you tried these? Were they worth it for you? If you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to like and subscribe. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you all next time.